Feast your eyes on this, quite possibly the most exciting bike or bit of kit we've ever reviewed here at Revolution Magazine. This isn't just a regular Trek Slash, this is a Trek Slash equipped with RockShock Flight Attendant AXS. This bike has been sent to us direct from the States. Um, it's one of two flight attendant bikes in the whole of Australia, exceptionally exclusive and rare. Um, we've had it for a couple of weeks now. Blake's been riding it. Today we're gonna to do a bit of a first impressions. Um, kind of give us a few trail notes on how it performs. Uh, mate, first up, how, how, what's this thing like? This thing is a spaceship. <laughs> uh, so as JT said, we've received this thing uh, straight out of uh, Rock Shocks in Colorado and was sort of pinching myself a little bit when um, when we got it. The tech behind this bike is absolutely crazy. Um, if you haven't already heard a little bit about the flight attendant suspension system, uh, it's an intuitive uh, suspension system that's adjusting the platform in your cartridges uh, a million times a second, basically. We've got a sensor in the bottom bracket, as well as sensors in the rear shock and the fork, um, and they're doing their thing, basically reading what's going on underneath the trail taken into consideration uh, other of the axis um, components, if you've got those specced as well. Um, fully adjustable, um, or you can run it fully automatic. So it's very, very intuitive on the trail. Um, simple to set up as well, which is a good thing. And yeah, plug and play basically. Now one of the things you notice about this bike, or this uh, the axis suspension, that you haven't seen on other bikes that have got electronic activated suspension, no cables. Um, kind of like we've seen Access do with that SRAM drivetrain, completely seamless. Um, all the batteries are contained on the fork, super small, super clutter free, just looks amazing on the eyes. Uh, first up, like, run us through the setup process when you get this bike. You have a calibration process. Yeah. Um, do you download an app or how's that all that system work? Yeah, so naturally SRAM have made this whole system super, super user friendly. Obviously, no cables, mechanics are going to love it. <laughs> uh, I myself, as, a, as an ex mechanic, like, Oh man, like I wish this stuff was around when I was still in bike shops. Um, but yeah, so if the whole thing works through that normal SRAM Access app as well, it's not like you're fumbling between two different apps. So once you've got all the componentry installed on the bike, basically you just jump on the SRAM Access app. Um, it basically walks you through the calibration and the setup process step by step. So it's super intuitive. Um, the app, as always with the SRAM Access app, is working flawlessly. Um, basically, yeah, step by step, I did um, actually watch a video just on the stream YouTube as well beforehand, not realizing how intuitive the system was to set up. Um, but as always, yeah, Stream have got all the documentation you need and um, yeah, really helpful videos on their website as well. Yeah, Stream really kill it with their um, demos, even yeah. things like, you know, how to bleed their brakes. I really love that tech videos. Now, got to ask you, mate, you've ridden this bike a few times, you've raced it. Um, how does it ride? Does it live up to the hype? Um, tell us about some of the settings you got on the fork and the rear shock. Um, and yeah, how do they feel? Is it rigid all the time? Or is it open? How's it feel? So basically the system stays open and then reacts to pedaling forces because we've got that sensor in the cranks. So it knows when we're pedaling. It also knows when the seat's up and down if we've got an axis dropper and naturally what gear we're in if we've got a full yeah, right. axis um, setup. Wow, that is intelligent. So it takes all these different aspects into consideration to how we want our suspension to, uh, to be reacting to the trail. Um, obviously we can custom set up how we want it to react anyway and through the axis lever over here where we'd normally just have the dropper we've got a manual control um, on either the lockout or the pedal platform or have it fully open um, but for the first few rides i just had this thing set up in auto let it tell me what it wanted to do um, and yeah super super intuitive um, and very very helpful on the trail like there was no times where i wanted to want it to be open and i was bowling through a rough section like the thing was open but as soon as you bang that seat up and start pedaling up a little uh, fire road pinch or something like that, you can hear the little, uh, the little motors working in the shock and the fork, and the thing's going into either pedal or lockout platform on the rear and firming up the fork a little bit just wow. to take away basically, mm -hmm. basically pedal bob is null and void. Like. So this is by far the most intelligent bike we've ever had. Not only is it the suspension, knows when to lock itself out, but it's going off the seat post, the drivetrain and everything else. Exactly. Mate, how long did it take you to get used to all of that happening underneath you? Or is it basically from the first ride, you're good to go? It's one of those types of things where I think if you overthink it and you're, you're thinking about, oh, like when's it gonna do this and that? Like you sort of work yourself up to go, oh, why isn't it you know, reacting now? Whereas if you just jump on the bike, you've got it all set up and just ride it, as if you were on a bike without it, you won't even really notice a lot of the time that, oh, hang on, 
this feels really, really good pedaling up this little pinch sort of thing. So it's one of those things where you just need to trust that the engineers that have developed the whole system, obviously they know what they're doing, but trust RockShox to build some of the best suspension out there without any of this system. Um, so now that we've got the system installed, like bike is just, it, it already knows what it wants to do before you even know what's coming up. Mate, is this the future of suspension and mountain bikes, do you think? Do you reckon RockShox are really on to something or is this something that's gonna be a bit of a fad that we're gonna see, you know, come on with your bike then goes away? I think this is definitely the future. Um, I think probably a, a bit of an analogy for it would be when dropper posts first came out and you know, some people were really stoked on them and others like, oh, you know, I'm never gonna use it. But I mean, we know where that went, obviously. Great. So I think it will take time for, for the masses to, to accept it and to, you know, to really feel the love for it. But I think if you have an opportunity to ride one and you know, get a feel for it, it's, it'll blow your mind straight away. Wow. Mate, obviously we're huge RockShox fans here. The Zeb Fork is hands down the best suspension we've ever had. Um, I know you're a huge fan of too, you've got your personal bikes. Mate, when you go ahead and you add the flight attendant, the axis to the suspension, does it kind of take it to another level or does it maybe detract a little bit of like how the suspension performs? It, it literally takes it to another level. There's, it's not impeded the actual performance of the suspension in any way. All right, so one of the big concerns people seem to have whenever it comes to electronics, um, be it drivetrains or suspension, is battery life. Now, what's gonna happen if it goes flat? How long it lasts? So, Blake, in your experience now, how, how much have you ridden this bike and how many times you had to charge it um, to get sort of through those rides? Yeah, so the first weekend that we had this bike was Cannonball Race Weekend. Mm -hmm. I had uh, full juice across all the batteries on the bike when we started. So that was five full days worth of riding. Uh, since then, I've done a couple of trail rides as well and uh, the flight attendant suspension batteries are sitting at around about uh, just over 25% battery life. So I couldn't put a number on how many hours worth of riding that is, but you know, it's a definitely a fair whack. So obviously there's a lot going on, an insane amount of tech. Now, one of the things I, I guess I'm, I'm wondering myself is with so much technological advanced equipment here, is it a nightmare? Is it intimidating to get set up? Obviously you get your bike, you just want to go to the trail. Run us through the process when you first get the bike and setting it up and uh, yeah, how much, of, how difficult was it, if at all? So basically, once we pull the bike out of the box or pick it up from the shop, um, we do need to calibrate the suspension. This is a very, very simple task through the SRAM Axis uh, app. Obviously they've got, SRAM is awesome with putting up how-tos and all that sort of stuff on their YouTube as far as the video platform goes. But you can just do it through the app. Like it takes you through it step by step. We get it all paired up. Obviously we want to make sure our batteries are charged. Um, we calibrate the bike, so lean angles, incline, decline, that sort of thing. Um, but from actually setting up the suspension point of view, we still just need to think of it as a regular Zeb and a regular RockShox Super Deluxe out of the rear. All we're doing is setting up our sag, maybe if we already have an idea of um, our volume spaces, tokens, that sort of thing, play around with those a little bit. But it's it's not as daunting as it may seem, like we're not getting in there and you know hacking the mainframe to set it up. Like cool. it's, it's still just um, still just pumping up the shocks, playing around with the rebound and away you go. All right, so you mentioned the app. I've got the Axis drivetrain on my bike and I've used the, um, the app, obviously I've changed the position, the configuration of the levers. Um, does the flight attendant stuff have a different app? No, we're all through the same app. Okay. So obviously like the SRAM Axis app, they're constantly updating it, constantly refining it, these types of things as any, uh, as any type of technology. So it's super intuitive, bang, connect straight away. Um, and that way we can have uh, all of our SRAM Axis, whether we've got the drivetrain or just the dropper or whatnot, um, it's all there on the same app. We can update uh, all the software, all that sort of thing, uh, all in the same spot. So there you have it. That's Blake's first impressions on the bike after just having it for a couple of weeks. Luckily, we get to hold on to this thing for a bit longer. Uh, Blake's really gonna dig his teeth in this thing. We're gonna be coming back with a lot more content um, around how it goes, especially the long-term, how what's it like to live with. Um, but yeah, added bite, this is RockShock Flight Attendant. Blake sounds pretty bloody impressed as you heard. Be sure to tune back in on our channel, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, keep an eye on Revo Mag for playing more on RockShock Flight Attendant.